What's up guys, today we're taking a look at the OWC Express 1 M2 NVMe enclosure and the speeds on this thing over Thunderbolt are absolutely insane. But I do have one major concern about this enclosure, especially if you're planning on using it on the go and we'll touch on that later. The first step in the box, OWC gives us the enclosure itself, which is really solid build quality. It's made of aluminum and it has these fins that dissipate heat pretty well. You get a Thunderbolt cable, a screwdriver, and then a rubber pad that you can use to cover up the screws on the bottom and to get the full speeds you're going to make sure that you're either on an apple silicon device or on windows if you have a thunderbolt 4 or higher port or usb 4 that's the only way you're going to get the 40 gigabits per second if it's just thunderbolt 3 or usb c this enclosure is not going to make too much sense because you're only going to get 10 and there's a lot of other enclosures that are a bit cheaper and installation is pretty simple you just remove the two screws then you can separate the enclosure and it comes pre-set up for your standard 2280 the NVMe drives. It also supports 2230 and 2242, but you will need a five millimeter nut driver to be able to unscrew that mounting post and move it to one of the other slots if you're using a smaller drive. And on the other side of the enclosure, you can see we have this thermal pad here that will make contact with the NVMe. You can see I gouged mine up a little bit and I'll show you how to not do that. And to install your drive, we just need to unscrew the screw that holds it in place. And I recommend putting it in at a slight angle. You actually see there's spring action here so you can pull it down and I'll go back up and then it should sit right there on that mounting post so then we can just reattach the screw this doesn't need to be super tight it's just holding it in place then when you go to put it back together you'll see these metal tabs right here and what you want to do is actually slide it in at just a slight angle so those metal tabs go into the slots but you're leaving just a slight gap so that thermal pad isn't touching the NVMe until it's directly above it you can even see here there's a little play that you'll have with the tabs in place and when we set this down you can see there's actually a cushion here and the thermal pad is hitting the drive so it's making good contact and once you screw the screws back in it should close that up where it looks nice and flush and here's my main concern with this enclosure here you can see the macbook air draws about four watts that's totally Total system power and then as soon as we plug in the OWC enclosure you will see this goes from 4 watts to about 12 watts and then it levels off at 10 watts but that's still two and a half times the power consumption compared to just the MacBook Air running and at first I thought maybe it was the 970 Evo so I went ahead and plugged that into the Sabrent 10 gigabits per second enclosure and then plugging that in you can see we got to about 8 watts and then it leveled off at just 6 watts and that means the OWC is using about 3 times the amount of power when just idle and here I wanted to do a quick test we're transferring 138 gig Final Cut Pro project and as we start that transfer on the OWC drive it took 42 seconds but we're using about 21 watts while this is transferring and then on the Sabrent drive here, it did take two minutes and 14 seconds. But if you look at the power draw, we're only at 11 watts, which is pretty much close to the idle wattage that the OWC was using. And if you're using this on battery on the go, then that's a pretty big deal as far as the drain goes on your laptop. And all that power consumption creates heat. The enclosure gets quite warm just sitting idle. And under load, it becomes almost too hot to touch comfortably. However, speed is where this really shines. And you can see here, we're getting close to 3100 megabytes a second for the write and about 2870 for the read. I also plug this into my M4 Mac Mini and the read speeds actually improve getting around 3000 megabytes a second. And comparing the OWC to the MacBook Air's internal 512 gigabyte SSD, you can see the Air slightly beats the OWC in write speeds, getting about 3,400 megabytes, with read speeds being pretty close. However, here we have the base M4 Mac Mini with just a 256 gig SSD, and we're only getting about 2,000 write and about 2,900 megabytes a second read. So it's pretty crazy that the OWC is beating the internal storage on an M4 Mac Mini by around 1,100 megabytes a second it right and then to quickly show you all the speeds on this Sabrent it's going to be a bit slower it's only a 10 gigabits per second drive so while the power consumption is a bit less we're only getting about 970 for the write and a little over 900 for the read and then one small complaint I have is the LED is pretty bright on this you might want to cover it with electrical tape if it's in a dark environment during the day it's not that bad but it is decently bright Overall though, the OWC is an absolute beast and it is one of the best enclosures I've tested. The build quality is super premium. It's really fast, but I'd probably be using this more on a stationary setup that has constant power over a laptop. And if you have an extra NVMe around and you don't need the ludicrous speeds, this Sabrent enclosure works really well. And I've edited 
H.264 4K footage, multiple clips stacked on top of each other with optimized media and really haven't had an issue. And the same goes for the Samsung T7. I have also edited a lot and final cut off of this drive. In fact, I even have two of these, a two terabyte and a four terabyte. And the T9's a great drive. I actually don't like it as much as the T7, even though the speeds are a bit faster. I'm not a huge fan of the design, but if you can find this around the same price, or even just slightly more expensive, T9 could be the way to go. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.